you do this again, Corby, if you print anything like this again, I'll fire you so fast. I don't know why you're so put out, Mr. Marshall. The article was completely innocuous, and incidentally, every word of it is true. It's pap. Watered down, diluted pap. You write for this paper, Corby. You take a stand on an issue, one side or the other, but stick to it. Never give up on it. I took a cripple of a newspaper and sold it to a million readers, and I didn't do it by spraying the news with antiseptic. I say what I think. My readers expect it. The clarion is me, William T. Marshall. It speaks the way I speak. You do things my way, Corby, or we part company right now. I don't like it your way. Sorry. Finished already, Mr. Corby? Quite finished. Sorry. May I help you? Thank you. I'd like to see Mr. Marshall. I'm very sorry, but Mr. Marshall's in a staff meeting. Can anyone else help you? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's rather important. I'll tell him you'd like to see him, Inspector Madden. Thank you. What angles are most important for us to feature on this series? I want uh, better picture coverage on the whole... I'm sorry. All right, gentlemen, that'll be all. Any idea what it's about? Not the faintest. Hmm? Show him in, we'll find out. Mr. Marshall will see you now. Good morning, Inspector. Sit down, won't you? What can I do to help you? I'm afraid I have some rather bad news for you, Mr. Marshall. A young lady was killed this morning. We've established her identity. Melissa Collins. I believe she was your ward. Listen. Where is she? St. Barnabas. I must ask you to make a formal identification. I'm afraid it's necessary. I'm deeply sorry.
know what it does. What? It makes champagne out of my blood. It lifts me. Let's get out of here, Melissa. Why? This place, it uh, cramps my style. You're afraid of him. Do you know what you're talking about? You're like everyone else. You just hear the name William T. Marshall. Your back there melts. Everyone's afraid of him. But I'm not. Just the same. Uh, let's get out of here. We can uh, drive down to my place at Ramsgate. And compromise my spotless reputation? Not this season. You know something, Larry? Yeah? I'll tell you something about William T. Marshall. I know why he rides roughshod over people, domineers everything he's a part of. I'll tell you what it is. It's a mask. I couldn't care less. I'm his if he wants me. But he can't own me. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. But that's the way it is. You don't understand, do you? You're stupid. I told you never to come in this house again, Shaw. I asked him to come. Get out. I asked him to come. You better get out, Shaw. All right. Still yeah. want to drive to Ramsgate, Larry? With me? Well, take me to Ramsgate. You're not going anywhere. Wait for me outside. I'll just get an overnight bag. Shaw, I'll cripple you. I'll run you out of town. Why is this thing be to let her go? With him? She's over 20. Does that give her the right to throw her life away? I'm afraid it does. Well, you don't know the things I know about Shaw. His blood sucked his way across two continents. You can't stop her. I will. Well, at least I've got a ringside seat. Melissa, go back to your room. You've been drinking. You don't know what you're doing. You don't think you can stop me? You don't really think you can? I still think I can manage some authority in this house. Over me? This Larry Shaw, you're acting like a little fool. And you're acting like a father again. You're not, you know. You can't treat me as if I were one of the push buttons at your office. You can't treat me that way. Melissa? If you go, you go permanently. Never darken your doorstep again. How dramatic. I'm serious.
Yes, Bennett, what is it? This has just come by express delivery, sir. Is there something I can get for you, sir? ask either forgiveness or understanding. And honestly, I am not sure that I want either too deeply or that you would grant either too easily. What I do want is something you will understand more quickly than forgiveness. I want revenge. Goodbye. For all that I've done to you, I know nothing but regret and sorrow. When you read what happened to me after I left you, how I changed my life completely, lost all reason for living, you will understand why my books badly need balancing. Melissa. An unused Cape of Good Hope, a fourpence vermilion, error of colour in pair with the normal stamp. This is the finest piece in the collection, SG 13 and 16 in an unused pair. I can start lot 164 at 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds. 2,300. 2,000... 2,400 pounds. 2,500, 2,500, 2,600, 2,700, 2,800, 2,800. Are there any more bids, gentlemen? 2,800. I have 2,800. 2,800. Quiet, gentlemen, please. 2,800. Once, twice, 3,000. 3,000 pounds. 3,000 pounds. 3,000 pounds once, twice. Sold to Marshall at 3,000 pounds. Is the sale over already? No, still going on. Did you get the cape pair? Uh, listen, Mr. Carnac. Look. You let it get away? Let it get away? What could I do? I told you to buy it in. What was I going to do? Beat it up to a million? It went for 3,000 pounds. You are a fat, blubbering pig. Mr. Karnak, is it nice to call me a pig? With that pair, my collection could have won first award at the International. What's important about awards? Three thousand pounds! I told you to go to any price. You are finished. Please, Mr. Karnak. <clears throat> I beg your pardon, sir? What is it? I'm very sorry, but there's a young lady outside. She's very persistent. She insists upon seeing you. I'm not seeing anyone. I told her that. She said, if I give you this, you change your mind? I... I gave it to me. The cape pair. All right. I'll see her. Very good, sir. Let me see it. Let me. You stay here.
Yes? Mr. Carnack? Yes. I'm Mr. William T. Marshall's secretary. Yes? He asked me to deliver a message to you, personally. He expects you at his home at Craighorn at 10 this evening. He expects me? Yes, he said the envelope would be most persuasive. It is. Fine, then you'll be there. No. You can return this to uh, Mr. Marshall. I'm afraid I can't, Mr. Carnack. You can? No, he was very emphatic. I was to leave it with you, and you were to be at Craighorn at 10 tonight. I'm afraid I have another engagement. Well, that's too bad if you have to break it. Oh, you seem like a very efficient secretary. I am. Will you answer a question for me? If I can, certainly. Just what is this all about? May I be very honest with you, Mr. Carnack? I haven't the faintest idea. I really cannot take this. And I really can take it back to Mr. Marshall. We have uh, reached rather an impasse, haven't we? Yes, haven't we? Well, there's an easy solution. Good. I'll return it myself. Splendid. Ten o'clock, Craighorn. Ten o'clock, Craighorn. Goodbye, Mr. Carnack. Goodbye. You sure I can't get you a drink? No, thank you. You know I'm in the newspaper business. Publish the client. Yes, I know that. Well, my job runs into all sorts of things. Never can be sure what's going to come across your desk. Odds and ends, mostly. Some of them worthless, some priceless. The big job is weeding out the good from the bad. Some I print, some I don't. You might call that a publisher's prerogative. Not in my head, I can smash a dozen tycoons. I like that power. I can understand that. You know, some time ago, a fella came to me with a report that was so incredible, I almost fired him. It had a reporter's whiskey flavor to it, if you know what I mean. But I didn't fire him. Instead, I took him off of his regular assignment and told him to track it down. Turned out to be the smartest thing I ever did. Cost me a lot of money to get that story. Right now, I think I got quite a bargain. It's all here. I could print this and raise the circulation of my paper, oh, say 500,000. But I won't. Sound interesting? Intriguing. Here's a man, literally a genius who's channeled all these intellectual talents into the planning and plotting of crime. Oh, he doesn't have anything to do with the, uh, the execution of these crimes, never gets personally involved. Yet he's the brains behind some of the most fabulous crimes committed on two continents. His work is precision tooled, every detail worked out. He doesn't merely plot, he creates. And he works for a flat fee, payable in advance. And they pay gladly. Now, how about that? Some story? I came to return this, Marshal. Now, if I may have my coat. You're not interested in hearing the rest of it? Not particularly. Not interested? My interest is stamps, rare stamps. I didn't tell you why I'm not going to print the story. I don't see how that concerns me. Don't you? No. I can break you wide open in a minute, Karnak, and you know it. Look, Marshal. You pay a fantastic price for a stamp at auction. When you present it to me, now you threaten me. What exactly do you want? What do I want? I want to commit a murder. Most of us do, at times. And you're going to tell me how? To commit murder? Yes. The Cape Pair is rather a fancy price to pay for that. I'll give you the information gratis. If you want to kill someone, buy a gun. No good. Too crude, too fast. Poison? It's a little old-fashioned, but uh, still rather effective. I'm going to kill a man, Karnak, and you're going to help me plan every detail. I want it to be a murder of pure artistry. I want to see him suffer. Suffer, do you understand, before he dies. Nothing fast, nothing crude. I think you are insane. 
That thought has occurred to me. May I have my coat now? You said you're interested in stamps, rare stamps. That is what I say. The rarer the better? That is right. What is the rarest stamp in the world? You know as well as I do, Marshal. It's the 1856 one cent magenta of British Guiana. Well, you're not saying things, Karnak. The rarest stamp in the world and on original cover. It's a fake. You're wrong. It's completely genuine. can be genuine. Why not? The only copy in existence is in the hands of a private collector in America. And that's its mate. But it's impossible. Where did you get this? A few years ago, while on vacation in the Caribbean, I bid in a chest of old mildewed letters at a blind auction. It had been written by a seaman to his sweetheart. All of the stamps on the letters were pure junk. Except that one. Sort of like uh, finding a second Cullinan diamond, isn't it? How do you think that look in your collection, Karnak? Make all the other things you have seem like beer labels, wouldn't it? That's your fee. If you want it. I don't know that it's genuine. It, it must be a counterfeit. You're welcome to put it to any test you like. Well? I'll have my coat now. Connick. Please take the cape pair. I'll expect to hear from you. I think it over. It, Larry. It was just wonderful. What do you think was in my mind while I was playing? Tell me. You. You're always in my mind, sleeping, eating. Larry, listen. I don't want to listen, Penny. I want to talk. Say all the things I... Larry, I'm having trouble at home. supposed to see you again. I had to sneak out tonight to see you. Father wants to send me to a school in Switzerland. When? I don't know. I think he's already made the arrangements. Will you do what I tell you? I've got a little place in Ramsgate. Go down there. I'll join you for weekends. By the time your father finds out where you are, I'll have my affairs set up and we'll 
they marry. How's that sound? Wicked. What's wrong with being a little wicked? You're the devil talking, Larry. He's the fellow who has all the fun. Okay. Steiger, can you give your mouth shut? Except for eating? Why not? And for a thousand pounds? Look, Joe. Permanent. If you were called upon to expertise the British Guiana one cent magenta, how would you go about it? Why should I expertise it? It already has a certificate from the Royal Athletic Society. You are talking about the coffee in America. Certainly, what else? It's the only one in the world. Couldn't be another? Mr. Carnac, please. We are both intelligent men. You know, I know. There's only one. How many were printed? Or more than one. What happened to all the others? Who knows? The last destroyed. Well, in 100 years, stems disappear. Uh, such things happen. You didn't answer my question. Hmm? If you were shown what purported to be a second copy, how would you go about it? Well, I'd compare it with a four cent value. Mm -hmm. Like this one? Sure. Now, what about other tests? Paper, ink? The printing type, the cancellation, the initials of the postal card. Absolute identification? Yes, and comparison would be conclusive. If the central design matched exactly? Couldn't be forged? Never. Never exactly, like fingerprints. Nobody could do it exactly. Not even me. <laughs> All right. We'll see how good you are. A nice gun. Do you hunt often? I used to. I haven't had much chance recently. And now, Mr. Carnac, your specimen of the forcep stamp. May I? Mm. Nice. How do you know that that one's genuine? It's authenticated by the Royal Philatelic Society. Twins. You think so because they seem to look alike. No forge is so perfect that it can make every line exact like the original. One line wrong, one detailed, and it's a counterfeit. Well? It, uh... Genuine. Sure, pray, Karnak. Where can we talk alone? All right. Pick up these things and let yourself out. Stamp. Of course you do. I'll buy it. Don't be ridiculous. Put a price on it. Price? The stamp in America is cut on four sides. 
pretty miserable specimen, really. Yet they value theirs at over $100,000. While mine is perfect. And, as you know, an original envelope. But what's the difference? It's not for sale. Everything has a price. That's right. You know the price. I've never planned a murder before. Well? Now, uh, let's get the terms set clearly. You're to devise a master plan for murder. The victim is to be dragged through the gutter. I'm not exaggerating. Dying is not enough for him, but to know he's going to die, to wave his death before his face, to sustain the torture, to make it last. That's what I want. I understand. When I'm satisfied that your plan lives up to specifications, only then do you get the stamp. I've got to know more. What? The name. That's my business. I cannot work in the dark. I'm sorry, you'll have to. Impossible. I prefer to keep the name to myself. Less chance of a slip-up. Of a double cross. Do I spell it out? Very clearly. Good. I don't trust Steigl. Depending on you to see that he keeps his mouth shut. Well, that reminds me. Call Corby. He's a good newspaper man. I want him back. Anything important? Two or three pieces of mail you should look at. Oh, and, of course, those letters you gave me last night. Oh, yes, that's right. Am I allowed to ask the reason for the sudden outburst of indifference? You ask too many questions. I'm female. Perhaps you haven't noticed. I'm sorry, that was impertinent. No, not impertinent, Katie. An understatement. The right words would be, I love the female. Mr. Madden. Be very careful, Mr. Shaw. That's free, but rather valuable advice. Just what do you want? When was the last time you saw Melissa Collins? Melissa? Her death is still under investigation. Well, why come to me? I don't know anything about it. You don't? No. You two were seen together quite a lot. That was two years ago. Was it? Look, Inspector, she was alone, a real screwball. I didn't know about it till we'd been together a while. Talk about burning the candle from both ends, she burned dynamite. It was too much for me. I dropped her. You didn't dare blackmail a man like Marshall? Or did that have nothing to do with it?
Is this a pinch? I wish it were. Oh, you've been lucky enough up to now, but one day you'll get a slip on your own oil. Hello. Who? Hmm? Oh, Mr. Karnak. Now? Tonight. But... But it's midnight, Mr. Karnak. Yes, yes. All right. I'll get dressed. Easy, Larry. Come on. <laughs> Once more. Is it great? I enjoyed your performance. Thanks. My name is uh, Ashley, the journalist. I uh, do uh, syndicated articles for a number of Australian newspapers. At the moment, I'm doing a series on world capitals. I know politicals, uh, just the people you know. What they talk about, what they like. Now, in London, they obviously like Larry Shaw. You want an interview? I'll get in touch with my agent. I thought as long as I'm I'll here... I'll talk to you some other time, just not tonight. I am leaving for Paris in the morning. Don't bother me, okay? I uh, often wonder what it's like to be a celebrity. I don't suppose it gives you much time for private life. Is it uh, worth that price? You know what you're talking about. It must change a man deeply. Always having to watch your step. Watch your words. Aren't you afraid? Afraid? Afraid of what? We all have something buried away. For most of us, it doesn't matter, but when you are a celebrity... Fuck you. Lay off me. You never know, do you? You know those fears inside will break up. And the whole world 
comes tumbling down. What's eating you, Larry? Mr. Marshal. Show him in, Bennett. Very good, sir. Charming. Pull up a chair. Coffee? Uh, not just yet, thank you. A very calm, very soothing, an ideal setting for a talk about murder. Shall we skip the overture? When I read the papers this morning, I'd rather thought you want speedy action. As you have never mentioned your victim by name, suppose we refer to him as Mr. X? Will that be all right? Call him anything you like. Uh, Mr. X. Provided quite a perfect canvas to work on. Then your plan is ready. Practically complete. I want it perfect. I guarantee it. Essentially, the plan involves a sequence of emotional impacts. Starting in the low key, gathering momentum until a crescendo of fright is rich. Oh, may I help myself? Yes. The beginning will be the classic trap. Uh, Mr. X, uh, unaware of any danger, suddenly, unexpectedly, finds himself alone. The second phase begins with the growing realization that he is trapped. He is told he is going to die. He is told why he is going to die. I thought you said he was alone. Who tells him? You do. I do? I don't get it. You asked for a master plan, foolproof, detailed. It is all here. All right, so he's trapped. He knows he's going to die. What then? Well, obviously, the third phase will be the developing of panic. Mm, very good. If you'll start with anger, defiance, there will be bravado, bluff. But uh, knowing our uh, Mr. X, this phase will be very transient, very short. The veneer will fall away. And all that is left will be naked fear. The sense of death will make a kettle drum of his brain. He will become a nerve shattered animal clawing at his cage. This is what you want. Go on. Well, isn't this what you want, Marshal? It's what I want, but. I don't see anything brilliant or unique in your plan. Trap him, scare him, kill him. Somehow, from you, I expected something more devastating. Did you? We go on to the fourth phase. Escape. Escape? That is right. 
escape. All that I've outlined up to now has been prelude, stage dressing. The real play begins now. The trap that seemed so perfect has a flaw. The cage has a weakness. The bird suddenly emerges into freedom. Escape. Now look at him now. He's outwitted you. His ego rises like a rocket. He's free. And then, right then, when his whole existence is at its summit, when life is sweetest, then you kill him. This is what I want. It's all here. Uh, most of it. Uh, I've located an old unused house in Maidstone, deserted since the war. It's a perfect setting. Oh, there's a complete set of floor plans in the envelope. What's missing? Two major details. For one thing, I still am not sure of a device to get our Mr. X into the house. Oh, I have two or three thoughts in mind. The other is the precise manner of the execution. Why don't you leave that last part to me? With pleasure. When will I have everything? Uh, shall we say, uh, Monday? Is there anything wrong? I don't know. It's all rather confusing. What is it, Bennett? Uh, do I look pale to you, miss? Pale? No, why? Well, I really feel quite fit. Of course, I've had a little asthma. I get it every year at this time, but... Bennett. Miss? What are you talking about? It was this morning. I was serving breakfast to Mr. Marshall on the patio. Suddenly he began to stare at me. It was rather embarrassing. What did he say? That I looked peaked and pale. And right there he told me to take ten days vacation with pay. Your regular vacation? Oh, no, no, miss. I had that four months ago. Don't you remember? Yes, I do. I really feel uh, tip-top, I think. He'll be all alone. Except for the cook, and she leaves when dinner's finished. He's been alone quite often these past few weeks. It isn't like him, you know. He said he'd like you to come up to Craigholm Sunday. I wish you would. I will. Don't you worry. You go on and have a wonderful vacation. Hello, Katie. What's going on here? Did you see Bennett? Yes, and he looked in the pink. Really? I thought he looked like he needed a vacation. I'm uh, taking one myself. Oh. Well, don't you think I deserve it? Of course, you made the reservations and got the tickets through someone else. Well, I uh, haven't gotten around to that yet. What do you say you go with me? Well, would you, Katie, if I asked you to? Not this time. Why not? I don't know what it is you're running away from, but escape's easier when you're alone. You know, you always throw me off, Katie. You're much too wise. Maybe, but in a stupid sort of a way. You're really going? That's right. Putting shutters on our windows, leaving it out for the milkman. I'll be through here in a little while. We wouldn't be able to work anyhow with all this racket. What do you say we take a little stroll? I've got high heels. Chicken. I know what that means, and you can't get away with it. Come on. Oh. Watch it. <laughs> Who's chicken? Come on. Steady, girl. <laughs> Don't say that. It sounds like you're talking to a horse. Well, we can get some work in now and then finish up after dinner, if you don't mind driving back so late. I've been doing it for years, and I haven't met a high woman yet. Like some tea before we start? Mm, love some. I'll tell the cook.
other papers of importance will be found in my safe deposit box at the bank. Now, let's see, what else? Oh, yes, and of course, uh, in the event of accident or death, my will and other vital papers are in the possession of my solicitor, Mr. William N. Boyle. He's to be consulted immediately. Well, I, I guess that just about does it, Katie. I wish you'd tell me the reason for all this. Precautionary, that's all. If you'll hobble me out of my car, I'll be on my way. I have just two more things I want you to do. First, I... I want you to have this. Oh, may I put it on? You've taken an awful beating in all the years you've been with me. This doesn't make up for it, but... Well, when you remember what you're trying to say, you sent me a note, won't you? It's beautiful. Now, one last chore. This is very important, Katie. I don't want you to ask me any questions. Just do as I tell you, okay? I want you to take this envelope to Inspector Matt. 10 o'clock tomorrow night. I've checked you'll be on duty then. 10 o'clock. You won't forget. No. Please tell me what it is. Oh, we agreed. No questions. What's all this mystery? You haven't fooled me. This vacation nonsense. I don't know what it is you're going to do, but it worries me. Whatever it is, do you have to go through with it? Yes, Katie, I have to. Everything you start, win or lose, you never let go. Can't you just for once give something up? Stop. Has this anything to do with Melissa? Melissa? I told you, Katie, I'm not going to answer any questions. Now I am frightened. It has something to do with her, hasn't it? This all started the day she... she died. Katie. There's something in here that's important to me. Won't you tell me what it is? You can't treat me like a piece of office furniture. You know better than that, Katie. You're much more a part of me than that. Part of you? How? Has only one person ever been a part of you? Will she always be? I can depend on you. You'll deliver the letter to Madden. I never fail, do I? Bring this line up higher. No, higher than that. What are you doing that for? Well, oh, mind your own business. How did it go, Larry? How did it go? Are you kidding? It's the old steamroller job. Did you see that lawyer I told you about? Who wants a lawyer? I'm not crawling on my knees. I got half a dozen offers. France, Italy, Austria. I'll be glad to get out of this mousetrap. You're doing all right for yourself here. Peanuts. It's all been peanuts. Well, I'm gonna cash in now. They don't know it, but they're probably doing me a favor. I wouldn't stay an hour if they gave me the deed to Trafalgar Square. Good evening, Connex. How are you tonight, Marshal? Very well, thank you. May I take your coat? It's finished. The final details. Good.
Here you are. Oh, this shows how to get Mr. X to the house and the exact layout of the room where you kill him. Splendid. I thought you would be pleased. There you are. You've earned it. How does it feel to own the rarest stamp in the world? I need a little time to get used to it. Yes, uh, rate something special. How about an old brandy that I keep under lock and key? Oh, that would be excellent. I'll have Bennett's. Uh... <laughs> Silly of me, I forgot that I sent him off on vacation. Oh, that's perfectly all right. No, 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 I'll get it myself. It won't be a minute. How do you put these pieces together? I can't. They're not what you'd expect from a man merely going on a vacation. I'm half crazy with worry. I think he's quite capable of looking after himself, after all these. Oh, I know that, but... Well? I'm just praying that the answers will be in here. I was instructed by Mr. Marshall to give this to you at precisely 10 o'clock. It's just a little late. Don't send me away, Inspector. I must know what's in it. Sit where you are, Miss Whiteside. I think I may be needing you. Marshal? 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 Marshal!
Kaiser Karnak? You should. Her name was Melissa Collins. But she never told you that, did she? She told you very little about herself, and that was fine with you. A girl who had completely cut off all links to her past. Oh, I asked questions. She was young and beautiful. Marshal, where are you? What did she see in you, Karnak? When she met you, she was lonely, bitter. You took her in, found a pleasant little game. One moment you would lift her to the stars, the next you would deliberately smash her to worse. You destroyed her pride, took everything else she had. You took them and used them, and then you kicked her aside. Marshal! And then the game began to bore you. And what happened to her then, Karnak? What happens to anyone at a point of no return? Something snaps, something gives. She threw herself in front of a train, Karnak. But that train didn't smash Melissa. You did. It's a lie. Who are you to judge me? Her last letter to me described you in full detail, Karnak. She asked for only one thing. Revenge. I loved her, Karnak. You killed her. The same savagery that killed Melissa will kill you. She lied to you. Listen to me, Marshal. Listen to yourself, Karnak. Listen to a man exalting over a plan of death. His own. Listen to a recording of you telling me your master plan. The beginning will be the classic trap. Mr. X, unaware of any danger, suddenly, unexpectedly, finds himself alone. The second phase begins with the growing realization that he is trapped. He is told he is going to die. He is told why he is going to die. All that I have outlined up to now has been prelude, stage dressing. The real play begins now. You won't get away with it, Marshal. The trap that seems so perfect has a flaw. The They'll hang you! Witness. The bird suddenly emerges into freedom. Escaped. Mr. X, unaware of any danger, suddenly, unexpectedly, finds himself alone. begins with the growing realization that he is trapped. He is told he is going to die. He is told why he is going to die. The opening now. He is not with a tube. His ego rises like a rocket. He is free. The trap that seems so perfect has a flaw. The cage has a weakness. The bird suddenly emerges into freedom. Escape. His ego rises like a rocket. He's free. And then, right then, when his whole existence is in sight, when life is sweetest, then. You kill him. begins with the growing realization that he is trapped. He is told he is going to die. He is told why he is going to die. Obviously, the third phase will be the development of that. It will start with anger.
win or lose, you never let go. Can't you just for once give something up, stop? Get away. He didn't go through with it. 